question is, is this a worthwhile question? And I said, I'll ask. <laughs> and he recommended several people to jump in <clears throat> while he battles whatever he needs to answer it himself. Is that fair? Good. Is this a meaningful question? How can we judge the way, the circumstances, the purpose both the Achaeans and Trojans relate to their gods? Apart from the heroes and the great figures, how do the soldiers they're in the battle, both both sides. How do they relate to their gods? And is that a significant issue? Okay? Like, two armies are coming together, they're in vicious fighting, they stop. Then Ias and Hector have a personal confrontation, and they're gonna have a personal duel. And before the battle, well, everybody is settled, Everybody's watching the soldiers pray. Okay. So, picture, what do you think soldiers might pray for? It's watching their two major figures in each of their battles, in each of their countries, participants in the war. How do they relate to God? Their God. Is that a meaningful question? Now, Igmar said, let anybody jump in and be first. It, it seems like an interesting way to judge the ethos of the time, to see how ethnic villages um, come together in spiritual thought. I don't know if it's, you know, so, what, the, what the priest would observe. Like, can you imagine, I, I know you don't realize it, but occasionally America does get into wars. No. Yeah, it's every generation. How do you think the soldiers might prepare for a life and death encounter before the battle? They pray together. What? Right? Whatever comes to your mind, would you be interested in knowing how Homer sets the stage? So I pulled out just one section out of book seven, line two, about 200. Take a look. Anybody need a translation? I have the load, but I'm going to lost one. Oh. 
It was a tie. Terry, go get it. Flip for it. No, it was definitely a tie. Terry? He, okay. he has done I think he had it on me. I think he had it on me by a We drop. lost one last week at the... Uh, yeah, we did. We uh, lost a low... Republic 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 Okay, what do you think? Take a minute out, look it over. Where is this? Book seven. What would you conclude? Well, but I've never heard a prayer like that in the sense that it, I can't imagine like people saying, oh, about our American troops going into battle. Well, let's have our guy win, but if he can't win, you know, let it be equal. It seems like we we usually want to vote it, you know, we're on the side of the angels, kill the other guy. So that's a difference, I think, that it's balanced. That they don't mind uh, if there's equal credit in both. Hmm. Add to that? Yeah. Right. 
Mm -hmm. You got the circumstance that they're mm -hmm. facing. I see pretty close, like she says, the men or the person who's doing the prayer says, if we don't win, at least we'll not be defeated. Equal might and glory. Give our few. I think they're more saying that they are pretty sure that their God loves them. But it may be that their God also loves the other party. So they're, they're not, they, they acknowledge that they are not able to, to tell their God who to love. Their God is, may love them, may love their neighbors, but if they do love them, at least love us equally. Give us an equal chance. Mm -hmm. And they believe it actually yeah, makes a difference. That's there. Right. Yeah, Norman? And they believe it actually is a, is a current, imminent power, that it's, that it's not something that will, may happen in the future, or it's, it's, that the gods are directly related to them right now, in the here and now, and that they can be heard. Do they think that these guys are literally on their side? No. No. Not necessarily. What? They're willing to... To consider that they might be on the other side. No. Yeah. Well, then how are they relating to their gods? Hmm. <clears throat> they're beseeching them. They're both, they're all relating in the same way. Both cultures have the same view of God. Is that, I mean, the answer to what I thought was the question. Their gods aren't, well, at least the way we're following this, the, the gods aren't personal tribal gods, they're universal gods. You already have a view about what it would be to be in a tribe. There are tribes. Right. But if Zeus is... Uh, just a, a tribe is what? A group of people you don't think have reached the stability of being a nation. That's such a joke. Okay, look. Would you agree people have a very clear idea in their mind of what these pagans, what these pagans are and how they relate to their gods? Agree? <clears throat> Does it match? Uh, it doesn't match the way we relate to our gods. Yeah. Is that different than the Old Testament God? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's no chosen people. Pardon? There's no chosen people. There's no chosen people. Ah, there's no chosen people. No vengeful, no vengeful God. Well, then, what do they want to see? Hmm. Does the argument justice? Fairness. 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 Well, I don't know. They want their guy to win. They don't ask for victory for Hector. Yeah, for a fair fight. Right. right. Like, yeah. If you love him, then let them both show themselves equally. It doesn't mean they still want Hector to have a chance to win. They want a fair fight. I like the eight. Eight says uh, before. They ask him to pray. Well, the first, the first prayer, they just ask for an advantageous outcome. And then the second prayer, they say, um, well, what would be the best outcome for all? Then what do the men who identify with these gods, what are they looking for now? What do they want to see? Given the fact that the gods are such as they view them, now what do they want to see? Okay. I think they want to see a fair fight because I has said that if it's a fair fight, he's going to win. Oh. Ah. <laughs> he says, he says if, if the gods yeah. don't tilt the skin. They want to the see case, a fair fight. <coughs> and what are they looking for? <coughs> Victory for us. Yeah. Staying power and <laughs> honor. Does the idea of honor come up many times before us? What are they looking for? They want these two to come together and have a total war against one another. And they're looking to see who shows the honor 
and staying power, willingness to stay on the battle to the end. That's what they want to see. What does that mean? Yeah. Well, they're not asking to be saved. They're not asking. They're not asking to be saved. They're not asking to be saved from life or death. They're not they're offering asking. sacrifices to persuade or bribe the gods to be on their side. They just don't want their guy to lose. No, they have a certain goal. They, they don't want their values to be betrayed. Yeah. Yeah. And these are just the soldiers, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, I'd like to see then how Hector and Diomedes and etc., Ares, how do they relate to the gods? These are just soldiers. Look at the end of the battle at around uh, 280 or so. Idaos said, Hey, enough lads, no more fighting. The Lord Zeus, assembler of bright clouds, cares for you both. Both are great spearmen. We all know it. But now, already night is coming, and we do well to heed the fall of night. Right. They're saying the battle equals, and they hang on. Lord Zeus likes your both. Stand off. And he was able to call it. See, what I'm interested in is what kinds of circumstances exist where people are going to look for evidence of, of their God being present? Got my question? Mm -hmm. And what is it about those circumstances? One, they have no premonition about what's going to happen. It's like a throw of the dice. All right, let's wait and see what comes up. But what kinds of situations will line them all up, you see? And I'm interested in knowing now where the, the major figures, when do they see evidence that might be a God at present? Right. A good battle fought to the even. Someone says, hey, that shows Zeus is present, he likes you both. <laughs> what kind of state is that? What are they looking at? Excellence. Mm -hmm. right. Excellence in combat. They're saying, hey, you come. It's easy to see God and John. Zeus loves you both. Cares for you both. That shows it. Is that why that's the way they're reading it? Mm -hmm. So pick another one, okay? I went through this ah, luckily enough to find that quote. <laughs> yeah.
By the Ladies at yep. page 79 of Book 7. How about that? This is over the idea of a truce between the two forces. Short piece to clean up the place and take care of the dead. He says, Hey, you know what? Let's not uh, cave in. You know what? I think the Trojans are on the edge of doom. Yeah, the king said, yeah, that's right, they are. Then the Lord Agamemnon comes in. Now what do we want to see? At this point, how does it relate to Zeus or the God he calls upon? Agamemnon calls on both Hera and Zeus. For what? For favors? For what? To hold to his oath. To hold, oh. to, hold uh, to his oath. Is that something predetermined earlier in the story? Sorry, come on. He's making, come on, what is it? He's making a public statement very important, is it not? Hmm. And he makes a gesture up to the gods by raising his staff in a certain way. So look at, what is he agreeing to? Number one, what is he agreeing to? <clears throat> See, if they make a truce, then what's going to happen to the treasures and Helen? Helen stays. You just give them up the loot. And, and then some. Hey, let no man here accept treasure from Paris, mm -hmm. Alexandros, mm -hmm. nor Helen either. Mm -hmm. well, we don't care if you throw in Helen. <laughs> Even a child can see, you know what? Where we're at at this battle, the Trojans are already on the edge of ruin. Don't seek peace. 
even if they give us back Helen. The hell with them. <laughs> right? That's what they came for. Yeah. No. So look at his answer. All the Achaean troops say, right on. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Then Diomedes is with us, right? Mm -hmm. And Lord Agamemnon responded, Agios, here by heaven you yourself have heard the Achaeans answer. For my part, I'm content with it. As to the dead, I withhold no decency of burning a man should, right? For burning. A man should spare no pains to see catheters catheter given as soon as may be after death to purifying flame. Hey, let thundering Zeus, consort of Helen, witness I give my word. What's he doing? Then he gestures to the gods. Well, he's acknowledging the debt. He's going to acknowledge the debt and, and um, make sure that they, uh, their bodies and are dealt with in a proper manner, okay. in a that's purifying there. way. That's there. What else? Or he's, he's going against all the Achaeans and he's saying that my one word promises you a truce and I pledge he could and, have, and I guarantee it by Zeus. He could have got back Helen. We're not going to take Helen. Hey, the Trojans, the Trojans are close to defeat. Let's stay and continue the battle. Is that what you're saying? Diamond. Agamemnon agrees. And Agamemnon says? I agree. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. My I give also. my word that we will then stay and fight. We won't accept Helen back at this point. But she's not being offered back though, is she? Yeah. Well, the Trojans, the Trojans would yeah. offer her. It's yeah. just Alexander. Yeah, but Diomedes yeah. says, even if, and Agamemnon. Yeah. That's right. But is that what the uh, Herald Ideos is offering at 392? Because it looks like it's the opposite. That the very wedded wife of glorious Menelaus. They don't offer. You're right. You're he will not give. Right. They don't offer it. But at 400, um, Diomedes says even if um, they were to offer Helen back, he wouldn't take it. No, I don't have that in my translation. Oh, really? But it just says, nor take back Helen. No, yeah. none yeah. except the possessions of Alexandros, nor take back Helen. Right. Well, it's, don't you have to consider the even if so, so that's like saying, even if they offer it, nor will you take her back. Right. But that's yes, kind of the piece of, the piece where, the, where he says, the Trojans did him do it. So it's got, like, all the Trojans are saying, give Helen back. That piece plays a role. Because then Diomedes is saying, even if you were to throw even if you were to go back and throw that into the pot, you know, mm -hmm. bypass Alexander. It seems like there's a re I'm, all mm -hmm. I'm saying is and cuts off negotiations, right? right? Yeah, yeah. Right. He's saying so he should put it, more pressure. Potentially that's right. right. Should, should put more pressure. It seems to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that must be the oath. Then would they include all of that? Would they include? The, the truce, but no no deal as far as the cessation of the battle. Yeah. Did you say that? I, I was think wondering. So. I, didn't, I, didn't I think so. No, I don't think so at first. But it is a cessation of the battle, battle, isn't it? Only for the sake of the burning. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cessation of the burning, right. But you saying like no deal in terms of a truce. Yeah. Like, oh, or, yeah, no new deal, right? Yeah, I have both. Exactly, I agree. Literalists. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, look, let's pick another one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
States. There's the complaint from Poseidon about them not sacrificing to the wall. That's in book seven. gods are on their mind all the time. Or right, enough times that we can see it's a dominant theme running through many people's minds. Yeah, sort of. Right? Mm -hmm. Would you call that someone who's religious or not? Well, they use the gods as an <laughs> avenue. They use the gods as an avenue to bring out their, their thoughts on what would be best. Would you agree then? A lot of people, though, would like to have their particular God on their mind as a way of judging what's going around. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Would you agree, in one sense, looking at this book, both the Trojans and the Achaeans constantly reflect on the nature of the gods, their gods, and they in some way judge their appearance here and there under certain circumstances acknowledge their presence, but they don't think they are uniquely going to secure a victory for them, but yet they pay dutifully respects and sacrifices to them, do they not? Without getting, it's not as a bribe. So what kind of religion is this? Almost like See, okay, let me put another one. What's interesting about Book 8? The same issue, the same issue, on the level of the gods. Yeah. How do they relate to one another? What, kind of, what kinds of states of mind can we judge the way the purpose of the gods relate to one another? In book eight, same question, raise it up in the heavens. When do they come together? Over what kinds of issues? In what way? What circumstances? What purposes? Do the different gods come together? That's book eight. Right? So look, look, see? The beginning of it. Look at book eight. Look at the way it begins. First couple of paragraphs. What do you see? Well, this is the Zeus tells them all to. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, Zeus tells them all to back off, stay out of it, let them let, let them go at it without the God's interference. And then he gets them all in the next page. See. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, you're quite right, but that ain't enough. It starts. No, come on, you're right, come on, add to it. 
Well, he's asserting his superiority mm -hmm. to the gods. He's whipping them into line, terrifying them into submission, letting them know how much stronger he is than them. Mm -hmm. And he's following the bidding of his heart. Yeah. <laughs> cool. He's expressing the will of Zeus, which is the... He's laying down the law. Lay down this the law. is the will of Zeus. Hey, before that, there wasn't any law. Hmm. He's now taking command. Would you agree? There's a battle in the heavens. And what is he now doing in Book 8? He's saying, look, my battle. <laughs> it's my yeah. way, yeah. and I am so powerful, all yeah. of you guys could be on a, on a string, on a chain, and I'd whip you around all together. <laughs> the whole and universe. Throw you yeah. to the furthest most reach of the heavens. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Look here. Then, what's the circumstance? He's laying down the law, his law. Council in the heavens. <laughs> Not much of a council. Um, establishing, establishing the way he wants them to function. Come on, I want to know that. Hear me, all you gods. Yeah. Does he give them freedom to do something, but not something else? Yeah. He doesn't, want, own account, yeah. he doesn't want opposition to his word, but agreement with it, so that he can make an end and speed of these matters. Yeah. And it says on his own account, which means you could, you could still talk to him about it, perhaps, because Athena does that. She confronts him and he... Let me put it in another way. Is he telling, at this point, the Greek gods to stop playing a major role in the affairs of men. Yes. So that my will can then dominate. You have my will and believe it. I can see it clear. We're seeing the effect that that has on the gods, right? Those for one, those on the other side, right? And we want to know those that are favor Hector, right, or the Trojans versus the Achaeans. How do they respond to this? Because they, all right, hey, all their loyalty, what are they doing? What is Zeus doing? What is Homer doing? How does he deal with it? Well, if the gods can't intervene in the affairs of men, they're not gods at all. Mm -hmm. He's stripping them of their divinity, at least in terms of them. There's a parallel set of thoughts here with respect to the idea that 
they don't want them to be destroyed like the like the other gods say, even if you're going to let one side win over the other, at least let us go and give the other side some counsel. Like he wants that it's a similar it seems similar to that idea that they don't that neither of the men really want to destroy each other completely. Like the men don't really want to destroy each other completely and the gods are also mirroring that that idea that, that uh, they don't want it to, they, they still want to go down and give counsel to the losing side, even if Zeus has made up his mind that one is going to win over the other. Okay, look. Now you can take the other side of it. Now the Greeks are in the middle of the battle. How do they look and say, there's the presence of Zeus? Like, what are they looking at? What are they looking at? And saying, oh, Oh, there's Athena. Oh, there's Ares. Especially Zeus. Well, it says they saw a kindling flat that shot over the people. Yeah, blazing light. That's true. He's balancing the fates. <coughs> How about right, 69. book A, around 250? Shame, you pack of dogs. You only looked well. What has become of all our fighting words? All that brave talk I heard from you in Alemos when you were feasting on thick beef and drinking bowls of brim with wine. Then every man could take on Achaeans by the hundred. Now we are no match for one of them, for Hector. He will set our black ships aflame. And soon, O oh Father Zeus, what great prince before this have you so blindly in disastrous folly taken his glory and his pride away? And yet, no altar of yours did I pass by, not one. In my mad voyage this way in the ships, Every one I burned high flesh and fat and hope to take walled, walled Troy by storm. Ah, Zeus, grant me this boon. Let us at least escape the worst. Do not allow the Trojans to crush the Achaeans, as it seems they will. The father on Ida pitied the weeping man and nodded. Mm. Yeah, his main army should be saved. And Zeus, that instant, launched above the field the most pretentious of all birds, an eagle, pinning in his talons a tender fawn. He dropped it near the beautiful altar of Zeus, where the Achaean, Achaeans made their offerings to Zeus of almonds. And beholding this, knowing the eagle had come down from Zeus, they flung themselves again upon the Trojans with joy renewed in battle. So, you know what, of all the Danians, as many as they were crowded there, not one could say he drove his, train, his team across the mount. No way. What did they look at? An eagle. 
Right. Mm -hmm. Dropping something at the temple, at, the, at their temple and, and the center of sacrifice. So, oh, Zeus! Right. Oh, Zeus! Right. Yeah. What kinds of circumstances do they look for? How do they judge it? What effect does it have? Is it dramatic? Mm -hmm. Right, very dramatic. Right. I know my Uncle Louis would say, what the hell, you know, some bird was off his track and <laughs> dropped a drive where he shouldn't have and probably <laughs> went home drinking a beer and moaning his loss. <laughs> What are they doing? They're saying, hey, there's something going on in nature, unusual. Hey, that's a sign of Zeus. The synchronicity. Right. What is it what they're looking at? It makes them remember the Warcraft and turn on the Trojans. Hmm. It's like they need uh, encouragement. They look for the sign at the moment that they need to be re-encouraged. <clears throat> but it is not, it's still a natural event of the place that they're crediting with a certain importance. Well, yeah, the oh. most lordly of birds, oh. an eagle. Right. Now, do the gods know what Zeus is after in Book A? Do they, they know or they don't? Does he keep a secret to himself? These be the, the gods, right? and let this one be Zeus. He made a deal with Thetis, did he not? Now, this is Hera. Did Hera know? She guessed. Yeah. Oh, did Athena, does Athena know? Yeah. I think so, yeah. He got pulled out by Iris. If they all know, yet they're taking sides. Mm -hmm. They all know that's what that, that's what's going to happen. That's what that's what Zeus wants. Until Book Eight, and he says, "I'm ending it." Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Five or so, book eight. Gray eyed Athena answered. Take a look at that. Tell me what you see. In my book, it's 192, 193. Does Athena know what no. Zeus is after and is willing to oppose him? Mm -hmm. Two things, yes or no? Yes. 
see if they all know. If they all know. Then up to book eight, he allowed them to intervene on either side, play a role. Book eight, he's saying, no more. And Athena decides to, to go against his will. And what happens to her? He gets spread out by Ireland. Oh. comes out with that great statement. Let's take a look. Now Zeus not only scorns me, he performs what Thetis wills. She kissed his knees. She begs him to give back honor to that stormer of clouds, Achilles. Does she know? There it is. She knows it all. But in time to come, he'll call me dear gray-eyed again. Okay, harness my team. Put on my battle gear. It's in Zeus's hall. Get it. Then let me see if Hector in his flashing helm exults when we appear on this precarious field. All right? She's ready to go. Mm. Zeus watches the rebellion, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. He says, I got news for you, honey. <laughs> you, got a, you have a great chariot with immortal steeds. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'm going to do with them. I'm going to lay it, I'm going to take the air out of the tires. <laughs> 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 Turn around, turn them around, turn those steeds around. Allow them no way through. It is not well that we should come together in this battle, but if we do, I swear something to you, honey child. I'll hamstring those horses' legs and toss the riders from their car. I'll tell you what, the chariot, I'll break to pieces. <coughs> With just one stroke of my lightning flash, it'll be all over. <laughs> Let gray eyes realize the peril of going into battle with her father. As far as her is concerned, you know, she gives me a hard time anyhow, so I got to put up with her. <laughs> that what you said? Yeah. 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 Got involved anyway. See, Athena, I want to go back, all right? And Hera said to <coughs> Athena, 194, very upsetting, I cannot now consent, I'm afraid. That if we make war with Zeus over mankind, I'll tell you what, no, let them live or die as it befalls them. Let him be the arbiter as he desires. It's due to his uh, status, his majesty. Right? See, what difference does it make if you're reading a so-called religious war and the big cheese says, all the rest of you gods and goddesses don't mess with human affairs. Ended. 
Is that what's going on? I don't want you guys going down there and interfere with human affairs anymore. End it. Ooh, that's a religious word. Hmm. Right? That's what Jesus said when he was in heaven. <laughs> he said to all the angels, I don't want you to mess with the humans anymore. Knock it off. That's the same thing, isn't it? Be similar, yes. If that could happen. Could it? I haven't seen it. It's impossible. Uh, hey, is this a religious or an irreligious work? An unreligious work. Like, is he saying, look, I'll tell you the nature of reality. Before all of these gods can interact with mankind and push them this way and that way, no more, it's over. <laughs> that makes it a religious work, doesn't it? It makes it a, <laughs> it, it, it makes it a virtual, that way. It, it, it makes it a virtual monotheism because if a god can't if an entity can't relate to me, it's not a god. I mean it can have all the power in the world, but if it can't relate to me, it's not my god. It's no god. There's no relationship. He's, he's cut off all the relationships between these other gods and man. So the only relationship anyone could have is with this one God called Zeus. And there's no way of figuring out the deal he made. The gods may know it. Mankind doesn't know it. Mm. Agree? In the story, mm. nobody other than Achilles knows. Though so he doesn't know how it will be played out. Is that right? Achilles knows the gods have been called off. I guess you'd call this a religious work because it shows the way the gods intercede. No, oh no, no, you told them to quit. Mm -hmm. Hey, good question. Mm -hmm. Is Zeus growing? Through this, does Zeus grow? Mm -hmm. Does he mature? Mm -hmm. Wow. Is he taking control? Hmm. So, wow. um, what's the origin of the, uh, what's the name of the book again? Iliad. Um, why did Zeus go along with Thetis? What was so hot about her? The older one. Huh? The older one. She saved, she saved him. Um, Previously, saved him from what? From from the gods trying from rebelling against them, trying to take them over. When he's hiding that the Okay, look. Then there's a picture of Zeus in the beginning, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And then, as a result of what she did, whatever it is, he then was able to be free and play a certain role in the heavens. Mm -hmm. He allowed all of this to go on until she reminded him that you owe me something. Then he then had to take control of his own law, of his own realm, and lay down laws for the gods. All right? Is he growing? Come on. Hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Because the way he was described before was that he could be bound by all those gods and needed her help. He was bound and in irons. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. And so now he's saying, you could try to pull me out with the, all of you guys together and you'd never make it. So therefore so he gained in strength and power, yeah. and he now has a vision. Ah, he's growing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, curious, God. <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, wow. He had that Yahweh. So if you go to uh, 195 here, or book 8, around uh, 440,
Zeus then goes back and uh, encounters Hera and Athena. They're sitting alone and apart. And neither of them say a word to him. And he knew their mood. So he says, hey, Athena, how come you're so gloomy? And Hera? Why? I'll tell you why. In war, where men win glory, you have not had to toil to bring down Trojans, for whom both hold an everlasting grudge. You don't have, hey, what are you doing it for? They got such, they had an everlasting grudge against one another. Do you think you have to do something to get them to fight? <laughs> hey, the control I have of the gods on Mount Olympus, you know what? They in any way can't deflect or turn around and do anything. Now I'll tell you a secret. I'll tell you why and what defeat was sure to come of it. No, riding in your chariot back to Olympus, back to your seats here after my lightning bolt. Right. So Athena and Hera, they put their heads together and they figure out, oh well, what are we going to do? Meditating the Trojans fall. Athena held her peace. Hera couldn't uh, contain it, so she screamed at him. He says, okay, I want to tell you something that's coming. At dawn tomorrow, you'll see more, both of you, Hera and Athena. If you care to see the Lord Zeus in the high rage, scything that army of Argive spearmen down, for a Hector shall not give his prowess despite from the war, until the marvelous runner son of Peleus rouses beside his ship, when near at hand around the stern in a desperate narrow place they fight over Patroclus is dead, that way the will of heaven, heaven lies. Mm. What's he doing? He's prophesying. He's telling the whole story. Mm. They know it. In general, he's giving the details. Right. And the Trojans are now burning the ships. A thousand of them are in flames. Right, and now they're waiting for the great counterattack. An attack.
So then it's very clear, evident, more than one section, but uh, they know the will of Zeus, and they know how it's going to turn out. And he's saying, oh now, stop it. Let's see. Do you think they can? Do you think he can hold it? <laughs> or will they still be some of these doing something in spite of the law? Yeah. <laughs> Like what? Well, just one question, like, what do you think would happen to people living at that time knowing Homer as they go into subsequent battles and struggles in their culture about their belief of how the gods may or may not help them? Right? Right, yeah. I don't think they would count on the gods. I think they would probably, you know, say Zeus's will be done, uh, but both sides have glory. If one, if one side has to lose, we let both sides have glory, everlasting fame from the battle, and uh, let's do it. It remains very human. Could there be a Joan of Arc? St. Michael, could there be a religious warrior? Well, at one point, he does promise Peleus his son. Um, uh, <coughs> so, Agamemnon uh, is going to, he's going to cut load the, the, the Greeks uh, until a certain point, and then uh, Menelaus is going to muster his troops. So, why don't you watch the show unfold for a while? Because he sounds like he's making the same kind of compromise he's pretty good at making in other situations. He's saying, okay, girls, you're mad. Um, you're bitches, and you have no right to be talking that way. Um, but uh, you watch for a while, and uh, I'm going to mow down those Achaeans. I'm going to mow them down and uh, protect them. And then, then you'll see at a moment, Valleus' the son is going to make a change. And so, hey, watch. Watch for the coming attraction. I don't think he makes too much of a point about what, what's going to happen to me. Um, the Trojans. He just says, until that marvelous runner, son of Peleus, rouses beside the ship, when near at hand around the stern, and takes the narrow place to him. Okay, um, excuse me, I'm sorry. So Hector shall not give his powers respite from war until Peleus acts. Okay, well, I'm with you. I got one question, on it. only one. Now that we know, shouldn't the story end in the next chapter? No. Why, what's missing? Well, he put men back into it in a pretty powerful position. He took the gods out of it, and now the men have to work it out. Would you agree they know the ending? He's revealed to them the substance of the ending? Yep. Well, then the next chapter can be that very episode taking place. Patroclus dies, Achilles gets upset. Goes into battle, the war is over. Mm -hmm. Why do we have to go through another half part of the book? That would have made it a religious book. <laughs> okay, what I'm trying to build up is why does he need the ninth book? That were nothing done. Right? Well, there's still a drama going on among the, the, the soldiers, and now it's an opportunity for the, the soldiers to work out their drama. Well, some reason or another. I think, <laughs> time to blow the whistle. I want to thank you very much for being here and celebrating my birthday. I'm immensely pleased. Thank you very much. Thank you.